Hello guys, I'm going to show you how I defeated the Flame Lurker. This is a pretty interesting demon. It's uh, quite hard. Uh, I'll show you how uh, the, the shortcut works first. This is the shortcut you can use to get uh, to the Flame Lurker faster. So uh, you'll see that soon. So I rolled here, down here. And then you jump on that platform. Be careful that you don't uh, overshoot. That happens a lot. From, uh, and then that one. And then you can jump over the thing. It's not really that hard and, uh, when you get it. But it is quite easy to fall off. So you need to be careful. As you can see I tried rolling a bit. That's to make sure you still land if you land on an edge. What I did here is a bit, little bit stupid. Uh, you don't really need, uh, want to do that. I left it in specifically so you can see, uh, see this. Because a lot of people uh, will have that happen too. So I'm going to show you the correct route now. So here goes, same as before. Actually I had a lot of fun with this uh, boss fight. It was uh, a lot harder than the other ones. And it took me quite a few tries to, to get it right. I think I've been trying for about an hour. But that's with with farming new grasses because I ran out of, <laughs> ran out of all of them. Yeah, it's quite fun actually. I think this is a quite hard hard boss fight. Definitely harder than the other ones I fought so far. I think it helps if you get a weapon that's magical. I don't have one that's magical. So it's a bit a bit of a shame. I still did that route. Uh, it is a faster route. Even though it's really hard to frick that one up. Uh, it's better to roll towards the ladders there. Okay, so actually I'm using Crescent Moongrass to get my health up. My build is pretty much the same as before except that I remove my leggings. And I'm going to remove my shield while in game. Oh yeah, and uh, I have the fire resistance ring. I removed the shield and the uh, Leggings. I removed the shield and the leggings to get me light enough so I could light roll. I'm not sure if that really helps. But I sure do hope that helps. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to stay behind the pillar. I do this because it makes it easier to avoid his attacks. Even though it's really hard to, to keep him behind the pillar. It took me quite a few healing items to get it done. So that's a bit of, uh, yeah. It was quite hard. It took me almost all of my grasses, even in this run. Yeah, basically I'm just keeping him behind the pillar and I'm poking him behind the pillar. Something that helps is if you use your shield, to use it at these blasts even though I noticed that it goes through those blasts fairly quickly here you see me equipping my shield because I forgot that and uh, yeah this makes me light roll so I'm now at 25% equip load at 25% equip load you start light rolling 50% is for medium rolling and above that is for for the, the heavy roll where you don't really even roll so 
I wanted to have 25% rolling for that, so I could dodge his uh, explosive things for the most part. It didn't always dodge it. I don't know. I don't really know why. That's why I'm telling you that it might be a good idea to use a shield instead of uh, what I did. Even though this worked pretty well as well. If as long as you keep keep going behind the pillar, you also want to have quite a bit of a damage output. Otherwise, you'll just be out sustained because the flame lurker has quite a bit of health. So as you can see, I dual wielded my sword and tried to make as much damage as possible which kind of worked but still took a long time it took me quite a few tries too because it's it's really hard to, to keep avoiding him as you can see I almost died there so yeah and it's basically just keep rolling away from his his, his explosives it's the biggest part of what you can do to to keep yourself keep yourself from dying. Just after he he did a blast, you have a chance to uh, to attack him. So he's going to do a blast. I'm going to roll in. I'm going to attack him. And I'm going to roll away. Except that I was I was stuck behind the corner uh, the player myself. So and he took some damage there. These are also good opportunities to attack. Well, most people, a lot of people recommend you only attack at that point when he jumps towards you. But that has a disadvantage that you have to sustain for longer. And with this boss fight it's really hard to keep either dodging his attacks or keep blocking their attacks. Or heal the frick away like I did. I mean, I almost used all of my... Uh, healing items on this boss fight I probably could have done with less but then I, I'd have to practice for even longer like I did with Manus it took me like 4 hours to defeat Manus but I almost lost no health because I didn't have much health with Manus so I, I imagine the flame worker being quite the same in that uh, aspect. You just really have to sync up with his attacks. But that's actually what I like about uh, Dark Souls. That you can uh, you have to sync up with the attacks of the enemy boss, and that you can always, almost always, uh, dodge uh, the enemy at enemy's attacks. I, I really like that. So when bosses don't have that, where you just need to use your shield or anything, I don't like the bosses uh, like with the, the Dark Lurk or something for Dark Souls 2. It didn't really have to dodge where you can really dodge. And uh, um, the Four Kings in Dark Souls 1 was also a bit uh, like that. But, but this. With this boss, I think you can dodge all of his attacks, even though the explosive ones are really, really hard to dodge, which is why I used so many healing items. A good point to farm for these healing items actually is to go to 1-1, one, one, the first, uh, first area, and uh, do the blue and the red eyed knights. You will get uh, gold and you'll get healing items from them. And you can use the gold to buy even more healing items from patches, which is in this area too. So that's really nice. I've heard that this boss is much, much easier with, uh, with magic, but I don't really do magic, so that's why I don't use magic myself. Shield could also help. But I've already said that. Um, the flame ring is pretty much a... You really need the flame ring to, to even do anything here. Uh, if you don't have the flame ring, you'll just burn to, de to death within no time. So, uh, you can find the flame ring in this area also. So, so I would definitely recommend you uh, walk through the area first before you do the shortcut. Otherwise, you'll have a much harder time. 
even though I did the flame broker quite early on. I could have done it later and have an easier time. But then again, I do like the challenge it, uh, it gave me. Like, I was really disappointed with the other, um, other enemies so far. It was really easy to dodge that, uh, well, not really easy to dodge them, because I didn't really dodge them all, but it was easy to, to get yourself healing again. Yeah, it was just quite easy. Uh, with the Flame Lurker, it was quite... The Flame Lurker was really a challenge for me. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that I got to a point where... All of the bosses are going to be like, uh, well, not as hard as this, but harder than the previous bosses. That would be nice. So as you can see, I'm just, I'm just really rolling away. Now. Uh, and as you can see, his attacks got more aggressive. Uh, and you'll see that it will get even more aggressive soon enough. Um, like he will only do the explosive attacks uh, when his health bar gets low enough. I think you'll see that soon. Uh, then also takes quite a while for me to get through that because it's it's really yeah I think this is the part where he only uses the explosive attacks as you can see. This is probably the hardest uh, bit of the fight. Uh, it took me a while to finish this and I got a few uh, a few times while practicing. I got to this point and already died there, being a bit angry that I died at the very last moment, even though this guy really gets hard at the last point, so don't don't get yourself uh, in a knot about that, because this is the way it's supposed to be, that uh, you get killed at the very last moment, so um, just, just pretend that this health bar is at like three quarters now. It's the best way to deal with that, I think. As you can see, I I just started rolling a lot. I mean, just misusing your iframes here is a really good solution to this. And as you can see, I misused the pillar as well because, well, <laughs> you really need the pillar to get uh, to get this, this this going. Like, if you don't use the pillar, well, you need better equipment than I had. And maybe a higher level. I am like level 35 right now, so. So if I was better prepared, maybe uh, I could have done it without a pillar. But then again, it wouldn't be as fun. So as you can see, I, I, I just started rolling a lot. Uh, the, this again is because of the iframes it will give you. So, it will give you more chances to dodge his, uh, his explosives. And at this point I'm just rolling in, hitting him, going back again, rolling in, hitting him, getting back again. Not even caring that much that I might get hit. Like, uh, at this point, I was like, uh, okay, maybe I will get hit, but I probably can't, can heal in time. Which uh, was quite... Uh, was getting quite uh, hard here. As you can see, I almost died again. So it's not always the best solution to just go for the hit, even though you might get hit yourself. Uh, but then again, you do need to uh, take away from his health, otherwise your, your sustain will suffer. Um, as you can see with me, I had like... 30 half moon grasses, they are all gone already. Just because this boss is quite quite the hard boss, so you really need to uh, be careful with that. So he is doing more explosives and I'm just chipping away at this health. It's going really slow. They say it's really easy if you do it with magic, but I haven't actually found any magic in the in the map uh, in in Dark Demon Souls as of yet, uh, and I'm not really that interested in magic either. So 
you can use that. Uh, maybe arrows will help you as well, even though the flame lurker gets quick, uh, gets towards you really quick. So you do have to stay close. As you can see, I almost died again. <laughs> so there was a bit of luck involved in this uh, in this match. But as you can see, the basic strategy is, remains the same. Just staying behind the pillar. Yeah, at this point... Um, something you'll learn from playing Dark Souls is to not get overexcited at this point. As you can see, uh, he has a low health bar. If I would just go hitting on him, like when he uh, doesn't do do anything to retaliate, you, I think I could actually get his health bar to zero. But you don't want to do that, you won't, don't want to get greedy because that will get you killed easily. Because he does uh, retaliate. Uh, I, have, I have been more aggressive, but as you can see I don't go for the finishing blows. Like, at this point... I don't go hitting him because that would kill me instead. So I'll just stay a bit behind. And as you can see I almost fucked up there because I hit him one too many times. But overall I stayed quite careful with my hits. And that's what you spo you're, you're supposed to be doing as well. So as you can see now I defeated the... Flame Lurker, it's quite a hard boss, it took me about an hour, but it's definitely not impossible, it's, um, I'd say it's quite like uh, Manus uh, from Dark Souls, but because you have infinite health items it's a little bit easier, and you could also do it later on.